Hi, this is your host, Upin Bhartia, and welcome to another brand new episode of TFR Let's See or TFR Demo. And today we have two guests from Cloud Casa by Catalogic. It's Chief Operating Officer Satya Sankaran and Software Engineer MD Islam. Satya, MD, it's great to have you folks on the show. Thanks, Upnal. Always a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you. Happy to be here. Uh, Satya, of course, uh, we earlier talked when you folks made a switch to Valero. Uh, talk a bit about how is this transition working out for not only you folks, but also your customers and the users who are leveraging it? It's been a fantastic ride. Um, in We went to embrace open source primarily because that's really where every single user of Kubernetes is starting out, right? Everyone's journey is starting with open source technologies first. Um, they use Velero, uh, and over a period of time, maybe they identify certain things that doesn't just work with Velero, and they decide to go to commercial uh, uh, solutions, right? But everyone's journey starts with open source. Even our competitors acknowledge uh, that in that place. And But what we saw is when you really look at market adoption, um, you know, you've got Velero with 99% of the market share. And everybody else fighting for the one person that is, you know, switching over from Valero, switching over from open source because, well, it doesn't meet all my requirements. Um, and I can't wait for Valero to evolve to what I need um, in a very short time frame. So that's why we really said, hey, we want to em- embrace the open source and be where the customers are and the users are. And we want to give them a path to use our solution without actually having to switch away from open source because, you know, it's almost a religious decision for a lot of people. Right, uh, you don't want to move from open source to closed source if you can avoid it, um, and 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 that's not a conversation we want to be part of. And so we want to keep those guys there. So we feel very welcomed by this community. We started contributing very very early on in this decision. We now actually answer you know more than ninety percent of the questions that come up in, in the Velero Slack channel or the forums. You know most of the questions are answered by our team. And again, it's because. Uh, that was what is needed uh, in this ecosystem because the maintainers were a very strong developers, but they didn't have a background of you know support and in 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 supporting enterprise customers and so on. So we took on that role of again kind of just owning that community support um, in the back end. But we've also started making you know bug fixes and 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 you know backporting important fixes that aren't there in the latest version. Uh, or the version that is most deployed. Uh, so we've started doing that, and we're now actually working on some of the core features that are coming up uh, to support KubeWort or, or features pretty big. We're working with the Red Hat maintainers. We're working with the VMware maintainers to make sure you know, those pieces are uh, in place as well. So in a nutshell, we feel welcomed by the community. We feel like we're contributing to the community. Uh, and and uh, uh, that's that only makes the community stronger. Um, and we feel that for the users of Valero, uh, you know, we are a low friction path to enterprise features without actually having to move away from Valero, Com- completely running Valero and still getting the features that you as an enterprise user will will be looking for. If I'm not wrong, AWS is one of the first cloud providers that you folks integrated with. Can you talk a bit about, of course, you know, it's, it's a great mix there, AWS and Cloud Casa. Uh, the benefits that users see of using Cloud Casa with AWS? Look, I think uh, uh, there are a, a dozen solutions out there that support Kubernetes for backups today. Um, how do you stand out on this ecosystem, right? We're the first ones that really fully integrated with the AWS EKS service. Um, and from day one, when we supported EKS, we did it in a way that uh, we integrate directly with the EKS uh, engine itself. Um, there is so many in, so much in Kubernetes that is stored inside Kubernetes, but there are a lot of things, uh, configurations that are stored at the envelope layer of Kubernetes cluster itself. Right, so that information is not sitting inside the cluster. It's actually sitting inside the guy that's hosting the cluster, and that, in this case, the most popular hosting provider in this case is EKS. Right, so we integrate directly with EKS to collect information on your node groups, your VPCs, your your uh, your security group settings, and 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 MD will walk through some of the load balancer work that we are we're, we did as well. We're collecting all of this information. Um, in order to make sure that when you bring back your environment, you're not just bringing back the the cluster information that is sitting inside, 
but also the cluster itself, um, right? So that's one of the benefits that you know users of Cloud Casa get with EKS that you don't get through any other solution uh, that is out there in the market. Second, uh, EKS itself is a, is is recommending Velero as the best practice for doing backups uh, with with their ecosystem. Um, EKS is different in the sense that AKS now have AKS backups, GK now have GKE backups, whereas AWS simply endorses Velero as the best practice option for, for you. And, and uh, we are the only real solution out there that's fully compatible with running an upstream version of, 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 of Velero. Uh, you run the latest version of Velero or the version that works best for you. And we simply support you know, management and control of that uh, on top of EKS, right? And the third thing an EKS customer should uh, consider when they're working with us is, um, I talked about how we deliver agentless backups with EKS. I talked about how we can spin up a whole cluster uh, with EKS. But what we, what a lot of people don't recognize is you can actually backup an on-prem cluster or a, a cluster that is running in an AKS or GKE and utilize our recovery workflows to spin it up in EKS in the region of your choice and your account of your choice, right? So as an EKS user, you get agentless experience, you get open source compatibility, you get full stack recovery, and you get to use EKS as a migration platform as well. If you wanna move to EKS, you can kind of go from anywhere and we deliver that cluster and cloud mobility uh, for those customers. And, and, and all of those is a very intentional integration into the this EKS engine, because again, it's been the first one we started supporting and it's still going strong. Can you also talk about what does AWS offer for container backup today? Look, AWS has something called AWS backups. It actually supports five or six workloads, but EKS is not one of them. Kubernetes is not one of them. Um, and and in, in, in this context, EKS or AWS is different from the other cloud providers because Azure has AKS backup that just went public preview not too long ago. Um, GKE added GKE backup, I think that went uh, uh, public preview or GA, I don't recall, but sometime late last year. So now the other two cloud providers offer a bit of um, backup built into their cloud uh, uh, provider services, whereas uh, uh, AWS's uh, uh, recommendation at this point and the best practice is to simply rely on the open source Velero to do its backups, right? So AWS doesn't offer an EKS backup per se, but they recommend Velero. And this is where our strategy of embracing Velero and offering all of the things the AWS user is, is, is used to, uh, multi-cluster management, uh, you know, enterprise reporting and control from a central console. Uh, look, if you're going to put all of your primary workloads and rely on AWS to manage that for you, why do you think people are going to just do a DIY on backups, um, right? If primary workloads are going to be something that you rely on AWS to do, backups are not something that you're going to DI DIY yourself. And there, CloudCasa becomes an option well, it is using the recommended Velero that, that AWS recommends that creates a whole bunch of reference architectures in, but it gives you that hosted experience a SaaS provider offers. Um, and, and that's how we help AWS fill that gap uh, with Cloud Tassel. Can you also talk a bit about uh, why protecting and restoring network and of course load balancer configurations are important in cloud because mostly cloud is seen as a magical place? Because you can't just take a cluster from one place and try to restore the Kubernetes cluster in another place and expect everything to magically work, um, right? People talk about the fact that the platform offers a lot of portability uh, and mobility. Uh, that just tells you that the binaries will come up and run. It doesn't mean all the dependent services that it relies on uh, are going to work by simply taking a cluster from one cloud provider and try to run it in a different cloud provider, right? Um, and, and, and this is where um, how you build the envelope around your cluster is very, very important. What services are you uh, are, are you dependent on your cloud provider to give you? You know, almost every AWS user 
has some level of uh, uh, network connectivity that is again very proprietary to what uh, AWS offers. And there is load balancer that you often will use the default load balancer that is out there uh, of, that is being offered by the service security groups. Almost every AWS user uses a concept of IAM uh, uh, accounts and enable that certain people have certain certain roles and access controls and so on. And all of this information needs to be captured in some way so that when you bring back a cluster, you can either map it, map this to a different account, map this to a different region, or potentially even to a different cloud provider, right? So uh, it is important that you bring your whole self, when you bring up a workload, you bring up the whole workload, not just the underlying binaries and the container images and the cluster configuration, but also how is that cluster you know, what is the cluster dependent on? Can you bring back all of that um, uh, uh, during the restore process as well? That's what we make the job easier. Otherwise, the alternative is, you know, someone has to manually go and configure everything, make sure that these settings match the settings that were taken at the time of backup, which is great on paper. Yeah, a lot of people can do that, but oftentimes you don't even know what worked once you've lost the data, right? If you don't have a great recording system, you're not even going to know how it was previously configured if you don't record that information during backup. And so we fill all of those gaps so that you don't have to rely on a manual process to get a cluster up and you don't have to uh, uh, you know, sit and record and transform when we can do all of that for you automated and essentially deliver recovery as code. MD, now it's your turn. Let's do the demo now. So I've logged into my Cloud Casa account here. Um, and uh, so this is the Cloud Casa dashboard. Uh, so what I'm going to be showing today is um, I'm going to be doing a backup of an EKS cluster uh, along with all the associated AWS resources like the VPC, subnets, uh, the load balancer, uh, as Satya mentioned. Uh, and then I'm going to be taking that backup and then I'm going to, I'm going to be doing a restore uh, from that backup. Uh, so. The first thing that you need to do uh, is to actually register your AWS account with Cloud Casa. Uh, so to do that, you would go to configuration, cloud accounts, uh, and then you click on add cloud account uh, button on the right side here. And then you can select AWS as the provider type and click next. Um, and then you, you see here, uh, you have this launch stack button, uh, which will open up the CloudFormation stack uh, page on AWS. Uh, and here you can use our uh, Cloud Casa CloudFormation stack template to actually uh, <clears throat> register your AWS account. Uh, and then you can see here there are uh, specific permissions, uh, specific features that you can enable uh, that corresponds to specific permissions on uh, on AWS, uh, right? So like EKS, RDS, uh, um, and EBS volume, stuff like that. Um, but in my case, I've already registered this AWS account. Uh, so I can show you that here. Um, as you can see, I have one AWS account registered uh, in Cloud Casa. Uh, and once you register your AWS account, it'll be an active state. Uh, so once you do that, you can actually click on the uh, AWS account. Uh, and then you can see that Cloud Casa has discovered uh, all your uh, AWS resources. Uh, and in this case, uh, you can see that I have two EKS clusters uh, that were discovered. Um, and uh, so you can see here, one is in discover state, one is in an active state. Uh, so once you register your AWS account, uh, all of the clusters will be in discovered state. Uh, but to get it into active state, you actually need to install our Cloud Casa agent. Um, and to do that, you go to action and install. And then you can see here, you have a, a cube control command that you can copy and paste uh, to actually install our agent. Um, so. The, the EKS cluster that I'm going to be backing up today is this EKS cluster here, md-test-2. Uh, so if I can show you on the AWS console, right? So over here, I have two EKS clusters, and this is the cluster that I'm going to uh, back up here. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to go to my terminal here. Uh, and I'm going to connect to this uh, cluster here, AWS EKS update. Like, Right, it's the cluster here. Okay, so you can see here that in the Cloud Casa IO namespace, I have the uh, Cloud Casa agent installed. Um, 
And then you can see, uh, so I have a few web applications running here uh, in three different namespaces. So web one, web two, web three. I have some WordPress sites running. Um, and I have, uh, so if you look at, see the persistent volumes. Right, you can see here that I have six uh, volumes and I have, so let's look at the uh, load balancer setup here. You can see here that I have the AWS load balancer controller running and I have, uh, so let's see here. Right, so I have a service, uh, this service here, which is a load balancer type. Uh, so this is my first load balancer here and see if I have any more. Right, so I have an ingress running. So that's my second load balancer here. Uh, and then if I look at my target group bindings, right, so I have, uh, you can see here, so this, uh, this is the service, this is the ingress, uh, and then this is a third load balancer that I have here, which I created manually uh, that I can show you on AWS. Uh, so over here, if I go to the load balancer page here, you can see that I have three load balancers associated with its EKS cluster. Uh, so two no network load balancers, one application load balancer. And uh, one of these load balancers, as you can see, is uh, was provisioned uh, outside the scope of the uh, AWS load balancer controller. Uh, so this one uh, could have been uh, created manually or through something like Terraform. Um, so what I'm going to do is I want to back up everything, right? So I want to back up my EKS cluster, the configuration, uh, the the uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, resources, the persistent volumes, uh, and the load balancers, VPCs. So I want to back up all of this information, right? Uh, so to do that uh, from Cloud Casa, what you would need to do is you would go to protection, uh, backups, uh, and then you can define a backup here and select your cluster, uh, so click next. And then you can, so we have options to select specific resources, uh, but I'm, I'll leave everything at the default here. You can see here like full cluster, select, you can select namespaces, uh, select resource types, labels, uh, include persistent volumes, or uh, there's also, uh, you can do a snapshot only, or you can do a snapshot and copy. Uh, so you can actually copy uh, the data uh, to Cloud Castle storage, or you can specify your own storage. Uh, but I'll leave everything here as it is like that and click next. Uh, so there's hooks, pre-post, uh, pre-backup hooks, post-backup hooks. I'll leave that as it is and click next. Uh, so there's policy information here. You can back up uh, based on a specific schedule that you provide, but I'll leave that as it is. And then here you can just set up a, you can just put a backup name. Or you can call it anything like demo one or whatever. Um, and then you can click create here. Um, so I won't be doing that now because I already have a backup that I ran yesterday. Uh, so I can show you that. Uh, so if I go to protection backups uh, and I click on this backup here, you can see I have a backup that ran yesterday um, that is completed. And you can see that uh, all my persistent volumes uh, were snapshotted and copied. Uh, and then if you look at the activity log, okay. Uh, so here you can actually see what was backed up. Um, so if you look, if I scroll down here, you can see that, uh, so it backed up all the Kubernetes resources, right? Uh, so the namespaces, uh, the PVCs, uh, and then it, you can see here, it backed up the configuration of the EKS cluster, uh, the node groups, the VPC, the subnets, the security groups. Uh, and then you can see here that it, it, it did back up that one non-controller provisioned AWS load balancer. Um, and then if you scroll down, you can see that it also copied the data as well. Um, so yeah, uh, and then the ingress and service and target group bindings as well, as you can see. Um, so that's uh, for the backup. So once you have that backup, uh, you can actually restore uh, from that backup. So if I go to restores, I can click on define restore here, or I can go to recovery points and I can select the latest recovery point over here and uh, click on restore. And uh, just like backup, you see, you can select specific resor uh, resources to restore, like select namespaces or labels or resource types, uh, but I'll leave everything as it is and click next. Okay, so here you can uh, select the destination. Um, so you can either uh, restore to the existing cluster, uh, so the MD test two cluster, or if you have a, another cluster registered, you can re uh, restore to that cluster. Or uh, in my case, I want to create a new EKS cluster. 
based on the configurations in the backup, right? So I click on that and then click on EKS cluster. Um, and then you can select a, a, an AWS account, uh, which account you want to restore to. So in my case, I only have one account, but if you have multiple accounts, you can actually restore to a different AWS account. Uh, so for here, I'll click next. And you can specify a name for the EKS cluster. So like demo one, next. Uh, the AWS user, so this is the user that will have access to this uh, EKS cluster once it's restored. Uh, so I have that, uh, set that to my user, uh, that you can select the region, uh, what region you want to uh, restore the EKS cluster to. Um, and uh, the other field, these are, I'll, I'll leave it as it is. Uh, these fields are also exist in the EK, uh, AWS console, so uh, I'll leave that as it is. Uh, but all of these information are pre-filled for you from the backup. Um, so it's getting all this information, like this, for example, this network information uh, is coming from the backup. So I can actually have Cloud Casa create VPCs and subnets for me uh, from the uh, uh, based on the configuration it got in the backup. Uh, or I can uh, have the option of specifying what VPC and subnets I want to use. Um, but I'll leave this as it is and click Next. Uh, same with the node pool configuration. So all of this information comes from the backup, um, or you can customize it uh, as you want. Uh, but I'll leave it as it is and click Next. Okay, so this is the page uh, that we wanted to come to. Uh, so this is the load balancer section. Uh, so here uh, I can actually, uh, so it's asking for the uh, the IAM role for the controller, the load balancer controller. So I can actually specify uh, what what the uh, uh, IAM role here is. So I can do that, right? So this has permissions to access the, uh, the load balancer on AWS. Um, and then over here, we can actually modify certain resources, the Kubernetes resources. Uh, so for example, like the service, if I want to modify the service, right? So let's say I want to modify that uh, WordPress service that you saw earlier, right? Uh, let's say this WordPress service is the load balancer type, but let's say I want to, I don't want this as a, a load balancer, right? I don't, I don't want to expose the service. I can just sit, set it to cluster IP and save it here, or I can modify the ingress, for example, right? Um, let's say this ingress resource here, um, let's see, but let's say I want to change the host, right? So I can change the host here, right? I want to change the host. I can do that. And I can, also, of course, I can also do target group bindings. I can update this as well. Um, but, uh, okay. And, uh, so the last thing here is the, uh, uh the non-controller provision load balancer. So this is the, uh, the non-controller provision load balancer that I mentioned before. Right, so this could be created manually or through Terraform. Um, so this one is coming from the backup. You, you can choose to have Cloudcaster restore this for you from the backup. Um, so I'll, I'll leave that as it is, click Next. And these are the list of add-ons. Um, I'll leave this as it is, so this is the, uh, the, uh, the role for the EBS CSI driver. I'll leave that as it is. Uh, so you have the options here. So rename namespaces, change storage classes, preserve node, node ports if you want to, um, or and overwrite uh, existing resources if there are any. Click next. Post restore hooks. I'll leave that as it is. And over here you can just set a, a, a name, right? Uh, demo restore, right? Uh, and then you would click on uh, restore here. Uh, so I already had a restore that I ran yesterday, so I can show you that here. So if I go to protection, restores, and I click on uh, the restore that I had, you can see here I had a successful restore job that ran yesterday. Um, and then over here, if you look at the uh, PV details, you can see that all the uh, the data of my person volumes in the, in the backup was copied over to my new EKS cluster. Uh, and you can see here, so what, what did it do in the activity log, right? You can see that, um, it started the re restore of the EKS cluster. It created the VPCs and subnets from the backup. Uh, it created the new EKS cluster in the in this region, the US East one. Um, it created the node pool, uh, node groups, um, it, uh, and then it gave access to my user. Uh, and then it, you know, it set up the OIDC provider. It set up the service account with the uh, EBS CSI driver. Uh, and then you can see here that it created the 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 um, non non uh, AWS load master controller provision load balancer, right? So the one that was that was created manually, so it created that, um, and then it set up the AWS load master controller here, as you can see. Uh, and then you can see here that it uh, restored all the Kubernetes resources, including the services and the in the ingress and all that stuff. So all of that is now restored. Um, 
so basically what what just happened is uh, all of the uh the the configurations of the eks cluster and uh the kubernetes da data the kubernetes resources the person volume the subnets security groups the uh the the vpcs the load balancer uh, so all of that has been restored from the backup Satya, MD, thank you so much for, of course, talking about Velero Cloud Casa. And thanks for this demo. And I would love to chat with you again. Thank you. Awesome, Swapnil. And always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you.